I was a rock hound when I was a kid. I had a rock collection, and so I think in a way I was predisposed to be a curator, loving to organize things and trying to interpret patterns about, about the world. I was interested in science, but I was also interested in uh, very passionately about literature. When I went to college, I wasn't sure whether I'd be an English major or a scientist, so I took a little bit of both, and when I uh, took a course that was uh, euphemistically called Rocks for Jocks because it was supposed to be e an easy class. Turned out to be very, very difficult and challenging, but extremely exciting because all the labs were outside. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. This is a way that one could potentially make a living and uh, spend some time outside and explore, explore nature. So my research spans everything from uh, geologic history, trying to understand the uplift of the Andes Mountains, the breakup of the continents over uh, Earth history, to very fine-scale understandings of evolution of, of brains in different groups of mammals, or uh, the rates at which DNA changes over, over time. I've been really lucky to have the opportunity to do field work throughout my career. It's something that I uh, kind of keeps me alive and vibrant, making new discoveries, bringing things back, having a whole archive of information that you're going to be able to work from for, for decades into the future, and in fact, others will be able to work on after my career is over. So I uh, have field projects in India, Madagascar, I've been to Angola recently, uh, major programs in South America, primarily in the Andes of Chile, where I, I lived for a year with my family uh, when I had a special Guggenheim Fellowship. When we first started working in South America, we had been drawn by a report of a visitor to the museum, just out of the blue came in and said, I have some pictures of whale fossils from the Andes. And the visitor services people called upstairs. We uh, said, yeah, let's take a look. And it turned out that they were, and we went to to mounted an expedition the next summer and uh, went and looked for these things. We found some more whale fossils sitting up at 6,000 feet in the Andes. Whales don't live in the Andes, so that tells you something about uh, the uplift where they were living underneath the ocean and today the mountains have risen to their current elevation. So that was um, something that was uh, not what you'd expect to find in the mountains. And when we didn't find a whole lot more of those specimens, um, as good geologists, we had maps with us and we said, well, there's some rocks over in this other area that, that are, are, are look kind of interesting as well, but let's go take a look at those. And when we arrived, turned out there was a vast fossil field of, of land-dwelling mammals that had never been known before. And that opened up the idea of looking in the Andes uh, for these fossils. I would have to say that actually one of the rewards of being a scientist is having students, you know, just thinking that you're helping to leave a legacy. Uh, that's very exciting to me, the fact that uh, I might be able to contribute something to a long, long history that goes forward uh, into the future.